Hello and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry. And I'm honored to um, be here with two ladies from the Ivy Rose Community Foundation here in San Jose, California. And we have our first guest, Miss Malika Young, and we have Miss Dion Morgan. And I'm excited to welcome to them to the show. We're going to learn more about the work that they're doing here in the Bay Area. We're going to jump right in and. Malika, if you could just tell us a little bit more about the Ivy Rose Community Foundation and what it is you do here in the Bay Area. Sure. First of all, Terry, thank you for having me here this afternoon. And the Ivy Rose Community Foundation Incorporated was founded in May 2001 with the purpose of serving the Santa Clara County community. Our main focus is actually the African American community here in San Jose. And uh, actually in the full Santa Clara County. But uh, we have, uh, our goals are to um, service young people. We are also interested in providing service for women in the areas of health. We also um, have programs to support school-age children, as well as um, older adults, home, the homeless population, and other uh, populations that are in need here in Santa Clara County. And what exactly is the mission of the Ivy Rose Community Foundation? The mission of the foundation is to cultivate and encourage high scholastic standards and achievements among youth, to support school-aged children by sponsoring community-based activities in the sciences, the arts, mathematics, and literacy, to promote health awareness among um, our population of women, as well as families, and then to promote family values. Uh, by enhancing the self self esteem of children through our programming. Awesome. So those are key initiatives yes. that you guys are working on right now. And one such initiative that we actually want to talk a little bit more about in this episode is your debutante ball that's coming up. So I know you guys have been planning the debutante ball um, for what about a year now? or more maybe yes, a year or more a year. Mm -hmm. and we have miss um, Dion Morgan here and you are one of the co-chairs of the committee if you could just um, first of all just give us some history about the debutante ball because we might have some viewers that might say well what exactly is a debutante ball so sure. if you could just tell us um, the history or what is a debt ball mm -hmm. and just give us a little bit of history about your debt ball in okay sure thank you Terry so um, the debutante ball that's hosted by our organization actually started in 1990 and actually one of our co-chairs Pamela Lowe who you'll meet soon mm -hmm. was a part a participant in that first debutante ball okay. and the reason why we started the debutante ball here in the Santa Clara County Silicon Valley area was to give young women an opportunity to build self-esteem as well as to service the community. So it's not like the historical debutante balls which were really a social activity that was focused really on finding potential uh, mates for the future. Okay. It's really now focused on empowerment, awesome. empowering our young women as well as young men to become leaders in the community. Mm -hmm. And that's what they all end up doing. So all of our debutantes have gone on to be successful in life and in their communities. Awesome, that's great. And I know you guys are bringing it back yes. because the dead ball, it did go away for a few years. And mm -hmm. I know that it was a staple in the community for, mm -hmm. since the 90s. Yes. Could you maybe just um, tell us why perhaps mm -hmm. it went away and, and why you guys decided to bring it back? Sure, that's a great question. This is actually going to be our 29th debutante ball. So as you said, this was a staple in the community. Our last debutante ball was in 2011. Mm -hmm. And that was during a time when the Valley was experiencing an economic downturn. Mm -hmm. And so participation in the ball was starting to wane. Mm -hmm. So we decided to actually just take a hiatus, wait for the economy to come back, wait mm -hmm. for people to move back into Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Because back then we did experience a lot of people leaving the Valley, going mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So what we found um, last year is that there was increased demand again for the debutante ball. We were receiving inquiries from parents who had young women of that age group. So we decided to bring it back and start our tradition again. Awesome, that sounds great. And um, and how can people, for example, how did you go about, um, I know you mentioned people mm -hmm. came to the group or the organization mm -hmm. interested in a dead ball. Yes. So how do you recruit the young ladies or how do you get your participants? Sure. 
two primary ways that we go about recruiting or getting the participants. One is through family and friends. So we asked all of the members of our organization to help to spread the word through their churches, through their other organizations they may be members of, through family members. And so we did get some of the young ladies that way. We also heavily utilized social media which actually worked out great because we have participants not only from the Santa Clara County area, but also from Hayward, from Oakland. So we've extended into the East Bay thanks to our social media outreach. Awesome, and that's great. So if a family, I know you guys are set for this year in yes. terms of participants. Now, could you tell me a little bit more because it's not just the young ladies, mm -hmm. but there's guys as well. Yes, it is. So could you talk a little bit more about that? So there's the young ladies that are the debutantes. Yes. And then there are the escorts. The escorts, so yes. So could you just address that? Sure. So debutantes have to be age 16 and be either a junior or senior in high school and then they have to have an escort who will also dance and support dance with them and support them before and during the ball so the escorts also have to be 16 years old or be a junior or senior in high school we also have our junior debutantes and escorts which we call our princesses and our princess so those are children uh, boys and girls between the ages of 5 through 12 they also have a series of workshops and they also get to perform the night of the debutante ball and they will be our future debutantes and escorts as they enter high school. Awesome, very cute. That's very nice and I'm excited about attending um, the Deb Ball. It's been a number of years since I've mm -hmm. gone to one and it was actually in Phoenix. Uh -huh. So um, I just want to talk a little bit more and I know in the second segment we're gonna get more into kind of the meat of the Deb Ball and the programs and community service projects that you do. But um, could you just tell me uh, maybe what do you look for? I know you mentioned criteria for the guys. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe just tell what kind of young lady, what are you yes. looking for when you, what would be an ideal young lady for the dead sure. ball? Another good question. So because our organization tries to really emphasize high scholastic and ethical standards, mm -hmm. we are looking for young ladies who are taking their schoolwork seriously, are making decent grades in school, and also have high ethical standards as well as a sense of helping others. Mm -hmm. So that goes for the debutantes and the escorts as well. Awesome, sounds great. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the little ones, um, I've never seen the little ones participate. So what exactly do they do? I know you said you have the juniors. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for them? Yes, and this is actually unique to our debutante ball. Okay. So what they do is um, they actually have a series of workshops as well. So for example, during the summer, they have a social activity so they can work on their social interaction skills. Mm -hmm. And a couple of weeks, they're going to have an etiquette workshop. Awesome. So we're actually going to take them to a tea house and we're going to teach them about eating etiquette, social etiquette, just so that we can get them started down that path of also becoming debutantes and escorts, as I had mentioned before. And then they also are going to start rehearsals. So they have a choreographer awesome. and they will learn a waltz or a similar type of dance. And the night of the ball, they will have on their suits and their beautiful white dresses and they will perform that dance in front of the audience. That's great. And one last question before we break. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the requirements? Meaning, um, I know there are specific things that the debutantes are required to do, and we're going to yes. talk in detail about that later. But if you could just give us kind of an mm -hmm. overview, because it's not just um, they get together and practice a dance. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more, but could you yes, just tell like, okay, now you're a debutante. Mm -hmm. This is what you're required to actually mm -hmm. do. Exactly. Debutantes have to work. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by work is that they have to complete 20 hours, a minimum of 20 hours of community service. They also have to host a social event. Mm -hmm. um, they also have to, again, attend the workshops. And we have workshops on personal development, on etiquette, beauty and makeup, etc. Mm -hmm. So they have to attend the workshops. And they, of course, have to attend a series of uh, choreography sessions so they can learn their routines, perfect the routines. And then they show up early the morning of the ball. They rehearse. They get dressed. They take photography. And so it's a very busy eight months or so for okay. them. Sounds good. Well, wow, this is great. Um, I'm excited to learn um, 
a little bit more or to share a little bit more about what the debutantes have been working on this last year. I know we're going to have two more chairs of the Deb Ball come in and they're going to talk in detail about some things that the debutantes have done. And before we take a break, um, Malika, did you want to say anything about the Ivy Rose Community Foundation? You are a 501c3. Yes, so are. proceeds. Um, from this fundraiser, it go towards? Yeah, sure, sure. The, um, the Ivy Rose Community Foundation is the beneficiary of the proceeds from the debutante ball. So it is a fundraiser for the Ivy Rose Community Foundation to support our programs. That includes our scholarship, our health workshops, our other community service activities. Uh, we work with the homeless shelter. We provide coats and, and other supplies for the shelter that we work with. Uh, we have food programs. We do backpacks for needy children. All of those things are supported by a fundraiser like the Debutante Ball. Awesome. So when you buy a ticket to the Debutante Ball or you buy an advertisement for the Debutante Ball, you are supporting all of those programs in the community. Awesome. Thank you so much. So it's yeah. not just, oh, did you want to say one, one last thing? Because I was going to say, it's not just about buying a ticket and watching mm -hmm. young ladies. Because when I think of a dead ball in mm -hmm. my com community, it was almost like a coming out ball. Mm -hmm. right. a so like you said, a very right. high society type of event. Mm -hmm. But now this dead ball is much more than that. The focus is yes. on fundraising and the raised funds mm -hmm. go right back out into the local mm -hmm. community. Right. And I like yes. that as well, exactly. that the money raised will benefit the local community. So yes. you want to close us out? Yes, yeah, so please come out and support the ball. We would love to see you November 20th. 24th at mm -hmm. the Doubletree uh, Hilton Hotel in San Jose. Mm -hmm. Please come out and support our youth. Thank you. And we're going to take a break and we will be right back and we will talk more about the Ivy Rose Community Foundation's debutante ball. Thank you. Welcome back to Real Talk with Terry, and I'm here with two more chairs of the Dead Ball. I have Miss Pamela Lowe and Miss Angela Warren. And in the last segment, I actually was with um, Malika Young, the president of the Ivy Rose Community Foundation, and Miss Dion Morgan, who is also one of the co-chairs of the Dead Ball. I'm excited to welcome the ladies to the set. I'm excited to hear more details about the Dead Ball and what the evening is going to look like. So we're going to just um, jump right in. First okay. of all, how many debutantes do you guys have? We have nine beautiful debutantes. Awesome. Yes. And I know your um, co-chair, Miss Dion, she actually mm -hmm. talked about how you guys recruited the ladies yes. and she gave us some history of the dead ball about um, why it went away and why you guys decided mm -hmm. to bring it back. So could you maybe talk a little bit more about your recruitment process for the debutantes? Oh, absolutely. And as was mentioned by uh, Dion Morgan, there was a heavy uh, emphasis on social media mm -hmm. and I think that really did turn the activity around mm -hmm. in regards to uh, getting the word out mm -hmm. and also drumming up interest in mm -hmm. this year's ball awesome. and of course uh, word of mouth mm -hmm. also um, played a large role as mm -hmm. uh, Dion mentioned uh, because most of our members within the organization mm -hmm. uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha Ada Rho Omega chapter mm -hmm. we are all involved in various organizations awesome. so we have a large span in regards to reaching out into the community mm -hmm. and also into our churches okay great so just so that the viewers are not confused because we are we're talking about the Ivy Rose Community Foundation yes if and you threw Alpha Kappa Alpha Ada Rho Omega yes you can just tell the relationship between the two organizations so that the viewers are not confused oh absolutely Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is the first African-American uh, Greek lettered organization in the universe, not just the world, but in the universe. For African Americans. For African Americans. And with that being said, we have the Ivy Rose Community Foundation. That is the arm that helps generate the revenue mm -hmm. that supports and administers our nonprofit 
activities right. to the community. Right. So one arm is the distribution arm for mm -hmm. the services and programs. Mm -hmm. The other arm is the actual engine that generates the revenue. Absolutely. So just and so that people are clear, the money that is raised through the foundation, it does not go towards dues and parties or, in, or any galas that for members only. The money that's raised for the foundation goes right back out into the community, uh, how the president and the other chair said. It goes absolutely. for scholarships. Scholarships. Also, we have our famous uh, Pink Goes Red event, mm -hmm. which is a free uh, community service health workshop, mm -hmm. a day-long workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we have our baccalaureate program, mm -hmm. which is one of our signature programs where we administer numerous scholarships uh, for graduating high school seniors mm -hmm. that are college-bound. We also have our back backpack program as well, where we administer backpacks to youngsters in elementary school mm -hmm. and middle school and those backpacks are loaded with wonderful high quality products to help them awesome. throughout the year and and you may and these are community partnerships yes. so the backpack drive um, the I know um, the president Malika she yes. mentioned a homeless shelter there's yes. a great partnership with the local homeless shelter yes. so these are collaborations yes. where you put these backpacks into a needed school exactly and so so that's so people will know well how do we know it's happening well you collaborate with other organizations you go out seek those organizations that need help yes and that's what happens so a lot of times people may not hear what you guys are doing but it's because it's usually a collaboration with you guys and another organization great and we are absolutely um, trying to make sure that people know when Alpha Kappa Alpha is in the community so making sure that those partnerships such as with Second Harvest mm -hmm. such as with the African American Services Agency such as with the American Heart Association the All Time Association we have numerous court, uh, corporate partnerships Awesome. to help administer our programs absolutely that's great yes. i love collaboration I, I truly believe in the team acronym together everyone achieves more when absolutely. we partner with other organizations with similar missions i feel like the reach is greater and and then we just do more yes. we're, we're more efficient absolutely. in how we do things so let's go back to the dead ball so i want to i want to just give the viewers a little bit more meat into what they can expect um so angela if if you could just share with the viewers, share with me, what will the evening look like for the debutantes and for the guests? Because I will be attending. I've never attended an Ivy Rose found Community Foundation dead ball, so I'm anxious to attend. So could you just tell us what will the day, what will the evening look like? It's going to be fabulous. Awesome. And so many people, when you see, talk about debutantes, of course, they think like you talked in the first session, mm -hmm. A, a social event, a coming out ball. Mm -hmm. And so they will have on their white ball gowns. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the escorts, mm -hmm. we have nine dibs and nine escorts. Mm -hmm. They will have on their tuxedos. Mm -hmm. um, the fathers will come and escort their daughters out. Okay. The daughters will uh, walk around the stage and Ivy Rose Community Foundation is concerned about education. Mm -hmm. And so we will talk about the high uh, scholastic mm -hmm. achievements of these girls, awesome. what they are doing in community, because community is a main function of the organization. Okay. So once we present the girls, uh, give them their time in shining lights, mm -hmm. and then they will, uh, their mothers will be there in ball gowns as well. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a fantastic event. Okay. They will learn the waltz. Mm -hmm. They're going to learn a traditional uh, Viennese waltz. Okay. Of course, they're young, so we have to get us some hip hop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they will learn some hip hop dances as well. Okay, nice. We have a professional dancer. Mm -hmm. um, so they are over at the studio, and she has done a champion. She just has awards all around. We look for someone who's professional, nice. who knows it, and they are learning the dances. The girls are there, the escorts are there. Mm -hmm. And of course, as we talked earlier, our prince and princesses mm -hmm. will also learn a dance. Okay. And so when they come, they're going to see our debutantes lined up in their white ballroom gowns nice. um, with their gloves and their shoes. And it is a way to uh, let them be a lady mm -hmm. and Absolutely. to see how it is to present themselves in society. Awesome. Nice. Sounds like a lovely event, Wonderful. a nice 
elegant evening so I'm definitely looking forward to getting all dolled up yes. and coming out so I do have a question um, you mentioned about what the day what the event will look like and I, I've been to one debutante ball. My brother was actually an escort oh, years ago, lovely. one of my brothers, when he was in high school. And I always, when I think of a debutante ball, um, I just kind of have a funny scene in my head. And it's the scene from Something New. I'm right. sure you ladies right. have seen right. that movie with <laughs> Sinead yeah. Lathan. Right. And she's at the dead ball, <laughs> drunk. And we will have none of that. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just kind of have this uh, thought in my head of looking out and seeing them do their dance. Mm -hmm. And everybody's very elegant and um, your other co-chair Dion she mentioned something mm -hmm. about how your dead ball has actually evolved yes, yes. and back in the day how the dead ball was kind of an event like this high society event to bring the girls and the guys together mm -hmm. yeah. but now your dead ball has actually evolved and how are you a how are you guys able to do that because this is a long-standing tradition in the african-american community is dead balls how are you able to evolve your event to get beyond that stigma mm -hmm. of high society bringing the who's who girls and guys together to be more community service and volunteer focused? Uh, I think the key is uh, the parent involvement. Mm -hmm. um, so our mission statement, which is to do in the community, and so when we reach out to these parents, mm -hmm. because they're the ones who have to back the, the, their young boys and girls together. Absolutely. And so the parents are involved in the community service as well. Okay. And so the focus is on community service. Right. This is going to help scholarship for you to go to college. Mm -hmm. This is going to help with you in your finance. We mm -hmm. give financial workshops. Mm -hmm. It's life skills and community service. Yes. So it's not just the Debs walking in and parading around the dance floor. Yes. It's an entire season mm -hmm. of them learning exactly. life skills, lessons that will help them in the future. Awesome. Our finance workshops, our etiquette workshops, mm -hmm. our beauty workshops. Yes. Um, and it's, it's more of that. And mm -hmm. Ms. Pamela can, yes. she is involved in one of the finance workshops. Awesome. <laughs> so she can talk about that, the awesome. life skills workshops that we're teaching them, okay. which makes a difference in what they're doing because they are learning. It's different. And the bond that mm -hmm. these young uh, devs and escorts are building because they have to do community service as a group. Yes. We build the relationships mm -hmm. and the community for our young African-American boys and girls as a group together. Awesome. I love that. So if you could, I love that. So it sounds like you were able to help the event evolve based on community service and volunteerism, yes. which is awesome. So it's not just a high society event, but it's rooted in volunteerism and workshops and, and coming of age, learning about financial planning. So those are like one of the workshops, right. financial planning, beauty and makeup. So what, what did the kids, what did the young people learn at the financial planning workshop? At the financial planning workshop, they we take them through, I want to say, a real-life scenario. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, it's dubbed the real-life um, workshop. Mm -hmm. And we actually have them think about, okay, where do they want to live? Mm -hmm. What type of cars do they want to drive? Um, where are some of the shops that they would like to shop at, mm -hmm. right? And they get all excited. They start talking, about, yeah, this and this and that. And then, and we have a newspaper where they go on the web, they Google things, right? And they start to really realize how much things actually cost. Absolutely. And then we ask them, hey, what type of profession do you plan for yourself? Oh, I want to do this, this, and that. Okay, let's check out online what are the salaries that are normally associated with that type of profession. Mm -hmm. And then they start seeing that A plus B equals C, right? They make those connections, right? Nice. And it's a wake-up call. Yes. And I'm like, wow, you know, they didn't realize. I say, yeah, okay, <laughs> that's what it takes, <laughs> right? Yes. And again, we have a focus mm -hmm. on the academics, right? Because mm -hmm. we all know that that degree will make a difference in Absolutely. giving your child us better choices, right? Absolutely. So we tie that all together, right? Mm -hmm. If you go to school and get that degree, it'll allow you more so to get that opportunity in that career environment that will allow you to make the funds 
that will allow you to live the life and have the options that mm-hmm. you want to have. And Absolutely. that's what we are all about, right? Awesome. We want our kids, our families to have those options. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. I love that. That is such a creative mm-hmm. and well thought out way to present a financial workshop yes. to young people is to give them real world scenarios. Yes. Where do you like to shop? What do you want to drive? Right. What do right. you want to do? Right. <laughs> now, okay, your job <laughs> support <laughs> Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. So uh, before we wrap, I just want to know, for people, for those who want to know, how can I maybe get a ticket to Mm -hmm. the dead ball? If I want to know more information about the dead ball, what should they do? Where where can they go to find out more information about the Ivy Rose Community Foundation and the great work that you're doing in the community? And and actually, you almost just said it. They can go out to the Ivy Rose Community Foundation dot org. Okay. And there's our website, and you can find all the wonderful information regarding purchasing a ticket, Mm -hmm. purchasing an ad. Okay. And uh, we hope all come out and support our ball, and have a fabulous evening and support our community. Awesome. And Um, we're also as we do community service yes. except for the Ivy Rose Community Foundation mm-hmm. this is a way for us to give scholarships mm-hmm. and promote higher education for our youth so we are looking for sponsors okay. um, so the city of San Jose has sponsored us nice. which is wonderful we thank the city of San Jose for their grant awesome. um, with the etiquette workshop we approached uh, Macy's and they were excited about the fact that we're teaching young ladies how to walk mm-hmm. how to you know Guys, so pull your pants up. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> please. Thank you. And please. so they are talking to us about the um, giving us a sponsorship because of the etiquette workshop. And so we're looking for different companies to help us teach our kids and young kids, mm-hmm. the 5 to 12-year-olds. Mm-hmm. You get the kids when they're young, teach them how it is to sit at the table. Mm-hmm. Teach them how it is to dress. Mm-hmm. Teach them finances early so that when they get to our age, mm-hmm. They're not looking back and going, oh, man, I wish I had known this was going to cost me. In my 20s. Yes. 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 Absolutely. I think back now, if I had done what my father said to me when I was young, take 10% of your money and put it in savings the first go round, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So those lessons that we hear from our parents that, you know, your parents did know something Mm -hmm. when they were younger. Absolutely. They did. And so the Community Foundation Mm -hmm. is really into putting something into our future yes. and awesome. our kids mm-hmm. are the future for Thank tomorrow you. they're our leaders absolutely. we're in silicon valley mm-hmm. so they're the leaders for tomorrow absolutely we're teaching them um so many stem workshops around yes. right so we nice. do we took stem and didn't do just one class we decided stem mm-hmm. science technology engineering and math can be spread out between in the beauty workshop, the science behind the beauty. Yes, exactly. In awesome. the finance workshop, you know, the thought behind all of that. So we mm-hmm. took STEM mm-hmm. and broke it into different workshops nice. so that we're still getting the STEM, but it's not just one class on coding. Right. It's a lot of different things. And so thank you so that much, is, Carrie. Uh, that is so creative. Yes. I love how you guys did that. Thank you so much thank for the you. work that you're doing in the local community. We look forward to the Dead Ball, which, by the way, is November the 24th, 24th. November 24th of right. this year. At the Hilton Doubletree, San Jose. At the Jose. Hilton Doubletree, San Jose. So visit IvyRoseCommunityFoundation.org yes. to yes. learn more about the organization, more about the Dead Ball and tickets. So thank you, ladies. And thank, thank you for you. being so flexible. Mm-hmm. If you guys are wondering, we actually <laughs> had some technical issues, which is why my panelists have a hand mic. But these ladies have been great. You've been flexible and gracious. Thank and you. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you Thank for having you. us. Thank you so much. So uh, once again, um, go to the Ivy Rose Community Foundation.org to learn more about the organization mm-hmm. yes. and to get tickets. We thank you for tuning in for another episode of Real Talk with Terry. And until next time, make this 24 count and have a great day.